Ys 8, Lacrimosa of Donna. Originally released on the PlayStation Vita back in 2016, the world got to know it a little bit better in 2017, and Switch users will be able to experience it a little later in June in what I consider an interesting release order. Normally, the release vector for JRPGs tends to be Japan first and then everywhere else second, but we're going to be getting it in the US on the 26th, and Japan will be seeing it on the 28th. That just seemed a bit odd for a title like this. This game has been out for a couple of years now. It's won its awards, but maybe you haven't heard of the East Saga. Maybe you're wondering why I pronounce it East instead of Wise. Shame on you. I get that people know the Tales of series, even more so with Final Fantasy. But Falcom has built a very vast and active world since 1987 with its East titles. It all started with the arrival of Ancient East Vanished on the NEC PC-8801. This was a Japanese computing system. Since then, it's constantly been trying new things. It's constantly been evolving as a series. The world of East kept growing. It kept gaining new nations. It kept showing interesting cultures. And over time, a grand history was revealed to us as being both bright and scarred. And all of this, all of these adventures were viewed through the eyes of Adol Kristen and occasionally his friend Dogi. Now, although the East series never received a vast claim on our collective consciousness, it does have an extremely die-hard group of fans. So for the East game to land on the PS Vita, a system that was basically doomed to die, that would have been a catastrophic thing for that community. So thanks to the efforts of many involved, the game was given new life across all the modern consoles and it even came to PC. And thanks to Nippon Ichi Software in particular, we're going to be getting it on the Switch. But how did they do? It seems that in modern times, the ports going to the Switch tend to live or die by the companies that get their hands on them. Some companies have even risen to the top of the pile based on their ability to port these games. And with Nippon Ichi, it does appear that with what they have access to, with everything that they seem to have put into the game, they've done a good job. It of course has its flaws, and these might have come about due to the limitations of the Switch itself, or maybe even limitations of the engine that was being ported over. Now, the people at Nice America were gracious enough to give us a copy on both PC and the Switch. This allowed me to compare both releases. The PC launch at the beginning had a lot of problems with the cutscenes crashing the game, as well as a lot of lighting issues. Over time, that's been ironed out but it's not quite at 100%, but it's close. So the question is, how does the Switch stack up to that? Well, visually speaking, the Switch certainly downscales the game. In both docked and of course handheld mode, there are obvious visual sacrifices. Textures, anti-aliasing, shadow quality tend to be the big ones. I really wish I had my hands on the PS Vita version to at least compare the origin point, because this comparison might have the problem that the PC is able to power through and upscale more so than the Switch architecture can. But even on PC, there is a slightly jarring visual approach to the game. As you've been seeing, the characters have this nice, bright, almost cel-shaded approach to how they're designed. But then you take a look at the world and it looks like it's been ripped straight from a PlayStation 2 game. I feel like at the time, the PlayStation Vita did have access to better visuals than this, so this might have just been an aesthetic choice by Falcom. At first this was a little off-putting, and on the Switch with its lack of shadow definition, with its lack of anastrophic filtering, you'll find that during combat it's a little hard to separate certain enemies from their surroundings. Some enemies are even just a little too nondescript overall. But then you fight those characters. You lock on and you unleash an onslaught of combos. You swap seamlessly to other members of your party so that you can match them up against the enemies that are weak to them. You listen to the banter between party members. There's no moment where you have to fade into the fight and then experience it. Everything is right there. And in these fights, some of these creatures have very unique attack patterns that make them that much more interesting. There is a reason East won the 2017 Game Informer's Best Combat System Award. And really, moving from PC to the Switch, it doesn't lose any of its responsiveness. And there's a crispness to it, perfectly timing a dodge or a block to achieve your enhanced state in fighting. It really feels rewarding. The gap of time required to be able to achieve this tends to feel narrow enough that the ability to do it kind of shows that you're learning, you're paying attention, you're actually engaged in the fight, you know enough that you're able to pull these things off, and that feeling is pretty incredible in an action-based JRPG. On to the sound of the game, it definitely took a bit of a hit. We talk about the compression 
and what they do to get these larger games onto the Switch. And I do feel in this instance, the compression affected the sound negatively. It crunched it down a little bit. It's not overwhelming, but at times the audio quality is noticeable. And the game sound alone didn't just take the hit for the port. If you're a fan of playing JRPGs and their intended voiceovers, with whatever subs you might need, you're going to be a little disappointed with this. As of getting this video together, the game is currently English only, and there is currently a lack of even having a subtitle choice, so there's a bit of a fear here that if you want to play it that way, you can't just buy the Japanese version and turn on English subtitles. Now I'm guessing in other countries, you'll be getting at least one of the two languages and whatever your respective subtitles are. That's the hope. Now this is just an aesthetic problem for me individually. I prefer playing JRPGs in this fashion, you might not. But this was enough to push me back to the PC version in an attempt to complete the game. And currently I'm getting my butt kicked by a giant bird on top of a mountain, so I'm working on it. But the journey to get to where I am right now was very revealing to the depth the game has in it. A town system that matters, a form of combat to both defend that town and secure supply lines, exploration that ties into the crafting and development of items in that town, a unique non-monetary trading system for crafting items, a story that keeps layering more and more intrigue at a fast enough pace that it keeps me interested in what might come next, an island that feels alive with a history worthy of an East title, characters you can connect with, some you might even be sad to see go. And with this being the core of the title, the Switch captures it well. If you are in need of some JRPG in your Switch library, this will be a solid add. But even beyond that, I implore you to pick this up. Maybe you, like many others, only know a couple JRPG titles. It's not your fault. East is not a title that should be overlooked. And what I like about Lacrimosa of Donna is how connected but singular the story is in the universe. It could be a solid way to introduce yourself to the series. Though you do play a character who is connected to all of it, they do a very good job of only revealing the important parts of his history in order to connect him to what's going on now. So don't forget to check it out, and thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw here, there's a little finger thing over there. I think it looks like maybe that. You can hit that if you'd like. Uh, and as always, let us know in the comments below what you think. Let us know about your history with the East series. It's a very long-running series, so there's got to be at least a few of you out there who have experienced incredible things in that universe. Drum up some hype, get people excited, and until next time.